fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the early days of the western United States. No one could match his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Frozen River! Hi-ho, Silver! Away! Ebenezer and Baldy were fairly old men. They had been pals and partners for most of their lives and lived together near their mine. Rheumatism made it difficult for Ebenezer to move far from his fireside. But since the recent arrival of his niece, Carolyn, from Virginia, he had been very contented until one day... Uncle Eben, there's something wrong. Oh, nonsense, Caroline. What could be wrong? We got a comfortable house, plenty of firewood, and now you've come to live with us. That's just the point. When I first came here, you and Baldy were as thick as two peas in a pod. I never saw two men that thought more of one another. <laughs> now, never mind Baldy. You tell me more about Virginia. I want to talk about you and Baldy, Uncle Eben. <laughs> now, there's no need snorting like that. I... I don't want to talk about Baldy. He's changed. I don't know about that. Cantankerous old weasel. He's turned into nothing but a frittering old pipsqueak. He's a regular old woman. That's exactly what I want to talk about. When I used to get a letter from you once in a while, before Daddy died, you were always saying how fine bald he was and what good friends the two of you were. Now, since I've been here, I, I've noticed things. It's him, that's all. I'm same as I've always been. I don't know about that. Well, I do, Caroline, and I'd sooner have no more to say that calls for mentioning Baldy at all. Uncle Evan, what's the trouble between you two? Nothing. Have you had a row about the gold claim you own? No. Shucks, no. Well, then what is it? Jealousy, that's all. The green-eyed monster that's known as jealousy. It's eating the innards out in Baldy. That's what it's doing. It soured his soul and turned his brain to cornmeal mush. But what in the world is Baldy jealous about? Oh, it's on account of you being a blood relation of mine. That's what's rankling his mind. Oh, but that's so silly. Why, well, I call him uncle the same as I do you. I know him as well as I do you. I never saw either one of you before I came here. Why in the world is he jealous? That's what riles me. He's got equal claim on you. You just said so. But Uncle Evan... You I... call him uncle, the same as you do me, and him no relation at all. That's what's got to him. He's stuck up. He's got so uppity a man can't talk to him no more. Uncle Evan, if my being here is going to break up your friendship... What's I... more, he's rubbing it in. 
Now, look what he went and done my birthday. He sent all the way to Frisco and ordered that fur coat for riding when he knows doggone well I'll never straddle a horse again. But he meant well. He meant nothing but honoriness. That's what he meant. <laughs> he gives me that fur coat as much as to say he's given me a present because he's got to. But he'll be hanged if he'll give me something I can use. But, Uncle Ed, but didn't you give him the same sort of a present? I didn't give him no jacket. I give him a rifle and a good one. Yes, but he's so nearly blind that he can't use a rifle. <laughs> yeah, I'll fix him. Precious little good he'll get out in that rifle. Oh, it's all so silly and so impossible. If you two are going to go on like this, I, I'll go back east. <laughs> you can't do it. You ain't got no relatives to live with there. I'll find something to do. I'll work. I, I'd sooner do anything than to stay if... My staying is going to make a break between you and your friends. Yeah, now, you're my blood relation, Caroline, and you're staying here. If that bald-headed, sawed-off galoot don't like it here, by ginger, he's free to move whenever he wants to. Aren't you all wrong about Baldy? No, sir. He took the rifle when he left the house today. <laughs> I can see through him like he was window glass. He figures to sell the rifle to the first pilgrim he meets. Then come and laugh at me because I ain't able to move about to sell that no-account hunk of skunk fur. <laughs> I'll bet right now Baldy's chewing with some stranger, trying to persuade him to buy that rifle I paid good money for. That's just about what he's a doing. You'll never get another chance like this to buy a rifle, stranger. Take a look at her. It certainly is a beautiful weapon. See, hold on. Let me see you closer. My ginger, ain't that a mask on your face? Yes. I thought so. My eyes ain't what they might be. That's why I hanker to sell a rifle. It ain't no good to me. But it's a good one for a man that's got shooting eyes. You're an outlaw, huh? No, I'm not an outlaw. But mask, well, don't matter none to me. This is a chance to buy a fine rifle. I'll sell it real cheap. But I don't need a rifle. You've got to buy it. It'll do me a heap of good to tell that skinny old cuss that I sold her to an out... Uh, well, anyhow, a mask man. Who? The coot that gave it to me as a present. We've been pards for years, till his sister's daughter come here and he seen how pretty she was. And ever since, he's been lording it over me. And you're not friends anymore? I'm fed up with a crazy sidewinder. Every time that girl looks at me, he gets up and starts slimping and working his rheumatic legs till she's all sobbing sorry for him. I never see the man make such a fool of himself over an 18-year-old young'un. Men who have been friends for a long time shouldn't break up so easily. Well, we're breaking. And as soon as I can find another place to stay, I'm moving out in the house. Now, look, stranger, uh, will you buy the rifle? Perhaps I will. Good. Then take her, and if you ain't the cash, I'll trust you. And that's yet. Huh? I don't want to take the rifle just yet. But why? Well, there are reasons that I can't explain just now. What's your name? Sid Sherwood. But everyone calls me Baldy. I don't mind none. I'll tell you what, Baldy. You know where the cafe in town is? I should. Then I'll meet you there tonight. Tonight? Seeks a life for what? To finish the deal. You come and bring the rifle with you. And you'll buy her then? Yes. But there's one condition. Hmm. What's the condition? It mustn't be known that I'm buying a rifle. Then maybe you're an outlaw, huh? <laughs> it's all right, stranger. I won't make no mention of it to anyone. Remember that. Sure thing. I'll remember and I'll see you at the cafe tonight. Right. Come on there, Silver. During the afternoon, the Lone Ranger learned more about the two old men and the fur coat that had been Eben's gift from Baldy. That night, Eben was sitting in his usual place before the fire when Baldy came out of his bedroom and... Look at the doggone old fool. <laughs> Slicked up like he was going to a wedding party. Oh, how nice you look, Uncle Baldy. I'm going out. Hey, looks like a fool. What you do to plaster your hair down? Where you got any hair? Seems like there's certain folks here that's pretty jealous when they see a man dressed up. Seems like there's someone here that's doggone mysterious about his business. My business happens to be private. Oh, stop it, both of you. All right, honey. I didn't mean to... Now, don't you call her, honey. She ain't no ways a relation to you. Ah, you don't know her any better than I do. Will you please stop it? I'm hanged if I blame you, Caroline, for getting head up. Must be downright tiresome to spend all your time sitting with a rheumatic old man. Why, Dad, rat you, Baldy. Save your wind. 
He ain't none too much and can't be wasting it. By thunderation, if you could handle a gun, I'd offer to do it. Uh, you'd have to set while you done it. I'll not stand for any more of this fighting and bickering. If you two can't get along, then, then I'll get out of here. Don't let the old man catch cold, Caroline. You, you, my blast it all, Caroline. I never can think of things to say to him while you're here. Granted, I'm plumb without words to use when I can't use some of my best cussing words. Did he take the rifle along with him? Yes, he did. Yeah, thought I seen him take it from the corner. Like he's not, he's going somewhere to sell it. Ugly old fool. Oh, Uncle Eben. What the... Hey, who are you? Me, Tonto. An Indian. Hey, what's the idea of you walking in like this? Get my gun, Caroline. Get it fast. Uh-huh. You'll not get gun. You here, Tonto. What do you want here? Did Baldy send you to scalp me or something? No. Me here, you got good fur. Huh? Fur? Got fur coat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a fur coat. Uh, what about it? Maybe you want to sell it, huh? Of course he doesn't want to sell a fur coat. Hey, now, hold on there, Caroline. Uh, where'd you hear that, Redskin? Oh, me here. You sell fur coat? Huh. Hmm. <laughs> I'd sure admire to see an Injun wearing that coat around town. <laughs> you want to buy it, eh, Injun? Maybe. Oh, Uncle Eben, you can't sell your coat. It was a gift. Don't tell me what I want to do. That coyote's out peddling the rifle I gave him. I'll get square. I- I'll sell you the coat, Injun. How much you figure to pay? Uh, me get money tomorrow in the morning. Me buy coat. <laughs> I'll sell it. You just get some cash. Here. Me pay fifty dollar. Well, it ain't much, but you uh... send coat to Tonto. Send it? Well, I got it right here. You can take it. Oh, Tonto, not take it. That'd be bad. Huh. You send it. I reckon uh, if you were seen around here with my coat, someone figure you stole it, eh? Mm, not right. Well, well, the sender. You send to North Trail, North Trail near Frozen River. Me wait there. Well, that's a pretty long ways, and in cold weather like this, I'd never make it. My legs ain't what you they... You send coat there? Oh, I'll try and find a way to get her there. Uh, you not say you sell coat to Tonto? Oh, you don't want me to say so? Oh, no. Well, all right, then. I won't say nothing. I'll get the coat to you somehow. Uh, me bring money in morning. Oh, that'll be all right. Oh, Caroline, you'll do your old Uncle Eben a favor, won't you? Take that coat to the frozen river up north, huh? Hey, would you do it, honey? Oh, it ain't a hard trip for a healthy girl like you. Baldy's selling the rifle I gave him. It'd be just fair and square, wouldn't it now? Uh, I suppose so. Baldy sells the gifts you gave him. Hey, that's what he's a doing right now. I'll stake my life on it. We're agreed then, Baldy. Agreed, stranger. And you'll get one of the finest rifles that's been made. It's a doggone shame I can't use my own self. If I could, I wouldn't let her go at ten times the price. There's only one thing you'll have to agree to do. What's that? As I've explained, it would be awkward for me to be seen around town with a new rifle. It might make lots of people question you about me. Oh. You'll have to send that rifle to my camp. Oh, where's that at? Follow the trail north from town to Frozen River. I can't follow no trail. My eyes... You can find someone to send with a rifle, can't you? Yeah, gonna have done no. What about that girl? Your niece, isn't she? Well, the same as... Well, let her deliver the rifle to me. Mm, I don't know about that. I... Well, it'll be no trip at all for a girl who can ride. I reckon not. Baldy, you don't trust me, do you? It's that doggone mask. I like your style and all else, but that there mask... Hang it, I... I can't take off the mask, Baldy. But I can show you something that may tell you why I wear the mask. Huh? Uh, this bullet. What's about a bullet? I look at it closely. You can see well enough at close range. Is she silver? That's right. Silver bullet. Mask. White horse. Jumping Susan. The Lone Ranger. Yes. But what do you want to buy my rifle for? Why do you want it sent to your camp? Will you send it there? Don't go on a will. Hang it all, you do some mighty odd things from what I heard, but you always got a reason for them. This shooting iron will be at your camp in the morning. Count on it, Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Tonto arranged to buy Eben's coat and the Lone Ranger, Baldy's gun. Both articles were to be sent by Carolyn to a camp on Frozen River. And the next morning, both Eben and Baldy tried to speak to the girl alone. Finally. Well, I reckon I'll step outside and get some fresh air. Good. I say good. I reckon I need it. The air in here is right bad. You're right. Go on, step outside. Too bad you can't do the same, Evan. If you go, the air in here will be all right again. I won't need to. What did I tell you two about this bickering? I'm downright sorry, Caroline. It's your uncle's fault for riling me like he does. Caroline. Caroline, now is your chance. But Uncle Eben, I... Hurry now and take the fur coat and skip out the back way while Baldy ain't here. Are you sure you want me to take it to that Indian? I'm sure, Aunt. But maybe he didn't sell the rifle last night. He'd have said something about it if he had. All the better. I'll get the first laugh. Now hurry, honey, and don't let your old uncle down. Oh, I hate to be a party to a thing like oh, this. Oh, never mind that. I'd a lot sooner leave here myself. They make your poor old uncle die in misery for thinking about you? Oh, Uncle Eben. Oh, go on, move you along. And see to it that you bundle up good. There's a sharp wind outdoors. Oh, yes, Baldy. Caroline, I've been wanting a chance to speak to you this morning. That's why I come outside. I hoped you'd come out in the house. Uh, what is it, Baldy? Hey, what's that you got there? Oh, uh, uh, Uncle Evans' coat. It, it, it's pretty cold, and I thought I might need it to keep warm. Oh, I see, Harry. Look, you must be going somewhere, then. Oh, well, yes, I had a couple of errands to do, Baldy. Why? Honey, there's a favor I want to ask of you. I... I'd sure appreciate it a plenty if you'd do something for me. Well, what is it? It's that rifle Evan gave me. It's standing there in the woodshed. Now, if you just take her up the trail north, as far as Frozen River... What for? Why, Caroline, there's a man there. A masked man that'll be waiting for you. He'll buy that rifle from you. A, a masked man? I know it's asking a heap of you, but for a special reason, I can't go by myself. Will you do it for me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, oh, Uncle Baldy, you haven't any idea. Yeah, but look. North Trail to the Frozen River. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Yes, I'll take the rifle up North Trail to Frozen River. <laughs> I'll start right now. An hour later, Carolyn found the camp where the Lone Ranger and Tonto were waiting. They took her into the shelter of a lean to. But when she offered them the coat and the rifle, they... And we haven't any desire to buy them. Then why... Tonto and I hope to see our plan work out. Those old men have been friends for a good many years. They're on the verge of breaking up. You know about that? Yes, I know about it. Oh, I, I feel miserable when I think of Baldy and my Uncle Eben. I thought you might. And that's why I felt we could count on your help. My help? Yes. Oh, I'd do anything to bring those cronies together again. The trouble is I don't know what to do. If I left, each would blame the other for my going and... And they'd be more bitter than ever. You must go away. I, I must? But not for very long. Listen to the plan I have in mind. If you'll help, it might bring everything out the way you want it. Baldy and Evan waited for Carolyn's return. But as the hours passed, they grew more and more nervous. At last... I should never have done it. Oh, Crickety, if anything has happened to that girl, why... She should have been back hours ago. Huh? What's that you say, Wally? Eben, it's all my fault. All my fault, that's what it is. I sent her out in this cold and wind to meet a critter. You? Oh, you're loco as usual, Baldy. It was me that sent her out. Huh? I sent her to take that dead ratted fur coat you give me to a redskin. Is that why she was toting the coat? But that don't matter now. I'm the one she was doing the favor for. I talked her into taking that darn shooting iron you give me to sell to a mask man. A mask man? Yeah. A crook. Well, that's worse than sending her to see a redskin. I know it is, Evan. I shouldn't never have done it. But I figured that it'd be all right in this case. I would have swore that he was the man that's known as the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Yeah, that, that's what I thought, Evan. Hang it all. I figured it wasn't far for her to go and that she'd be getting back in no time at all. Where to did she go? To Frozen River. Where to? I said to Frozen River. That's where she was to take the rifle. But that's where she was going with the fur. What? It's a trick, that's what it is. That masked man and the red skin was in cahoots. I see it all now as plain as day. Oh, Cracky Evan, 
We gotta do something. We gotta go after her. If anything happens to Caroline, it's your fault. It's all your fault. You hadn't given me that coat in the first place. What about you giving me the rifle? Uh, we got to do something. We've got to. Well, go out and hunt for her. There'll be a trail. Uh, that won't help none. You couldn't see to follow a trail. I got to. I'm going. You? Why, them legs of yours ain't no good. I got to. I can see trail marks. She didn't go on horseback, did she? Don't reckon so. Look, Wally, you got to hitch up a buckboard and help get me aboard. Ain't no good, Eben. Cripple like you are, you wouldn't be no good. We gotta both go. I'll do what walking has to be done, and you do what seeing is needed. We got to go and stick together. All right. Help me to that door. Let me see what the weather is like. And now, oh, my legs. Lean on to me, Eben. We'll get to the door. Yeah, I'll be all right. Open her up and let's have a look. Sounds bad. The snow's blowing hard, but we've got to do it, Baldy. I can do it better alone. You need eyes. Get a rig fixed, Baldy, and a strong team, and make it fast. It gets dark real early these days, and we can't lose no time. The two old men defied the cold and whistling wind as they guided the big team through the snow toward the frozen river. But at the same time, the Lone Ranger and Tonto remained close by to ensure their safety. Be careful they don't see us, Tonto. Ah, me watch out. They both deserve a lesson, but I don't want anything to happen to them. We've got to make sure they find Carolyn. That's right. Maybe them get lost in storm. That's why we've got to watch them every step of the way to see that no harm comes to them. The two old men continued their trip. Finally, Evans sighted the camp, which seemed to have been abandoned, then pointed ahead. Looks to be some fur catched off the coat on the tree right ahead. Tell me when to stop the horses. Now. Whoa, whoa, there. Get down, Baldy, and see if that ain't fur right on the low branch there beside us. All right, I'm going. I got it. It's fur, all right, Evan. Then we're still... What's that? All right. Listen, there's another. Another. Evan, that's a repeating rifle like you give me. Uh, where them shots come from? Uh, that way. Then let's get there. Come on. Uh, get up there. Get up. Get up there. Guided by the rifle shots, the two old men fought their way through the snow until they came to a gully. Evan saw the girl lying in the snow at the bottom, wrapped in a heavy fur coat. Is it her? Sure. Caroline? Honey, are you all right? I'm all right, but get me out of here. I just twisted my ankle. I can't walk very well. I'll help you out, Mayor Caroline. Just a minute now. I'm, I'm coming down. Be careful you don't sit, Baldy. I'm all right. There now. Can you stand? I, I, I can stand all right. Just let me lean on you, and I'll be all right. Hey, come on. We got the horses in a rig here. Get you home in no time at all. Poor young and you. This must have been enough to scare the daylights out of you. Hey, just lean on me. That's it now. Here, take my hand and let me help you to the wagon. I'm not hurt so badly. I, I knew the rifle shots would bring help sooner or later. Hey, get aboard now. Bundle yourself tight in that fur so she don't get too cold. All right. Why, I'd likely have frozen if it hadn't been for the fur coat. Yeah, how'd you come to get lost like that? Must have missed the camp I was looking for and got started on the wrong direction. Now at them horses, Baldy, and get for home. Get up there. Get up there. Warm and comfortable in front of the big fireplace, Carolyn sat on the floor between the two old men. Neither of them spoke for a long time. They seemed to be thinking, and then... If it hadn't been for having my fur coat, you'd have sure froze, Caroline. I guess I sure would have, Uncle Ethan. It's my rifle that fetched us, though. Uh, we followed the trail of bits of fur that catched on trees. Uh, but we'd have gone right by that gully if Caroline hadn't fired the rifle and fast so as we'd know it was that fine repeater. Maybe so. Don't you see? If it wasn't for both the rifle and the coat, I mightn't be here right now. Uh, well, uh... And if it hadn't been for both of you men working together, you wouldn't have found me. Well, well, I've been thinking of that. It took your eyes, Uncle Evan, to spot the clues. Yeah, that's but right. But you couldn't have done much about him if it hadn't been for Uncle Baldy having the use of his legs. Just so. Ebenezer, I've been thinking. Mm, me too. What are you thinking? Well, here we are, a couple of stove-in old men. Each of us ain't much more than half a man. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 
takes the two of us working together to do what either one of us could have done 20 years ago. We should have split up then. Yeah, should have, but didn't. Didn't then, shouldn't now. That's just it. Oh, I care so much for both of you that, that I'm unhappy when you aren't good friends. Um, uh, uh, look, Caroline, uh, you didn't get to see the engine to complete the sale of the coat, did you? I didn't sell it. I'm sort of glad you didn't sell the rifle, neither. It's a right fine rifle. I, I reckon maybe I'd better clean it and run some towel through the barrel. Don't do to let a fine rifle stand around without cleaning. Baldy, while you're up to get the rifle, would you mind handing down that there fur coat? Uh, you ain't going out. No, but the heat ain't so good at this side of the fireplace, and I reckon that coat will feel good around my shoulders. There you are, Evan. Maybe I could borrow it when I go out. Sure you can. Maybe I can borrow your rifle when the weather's warm and nice again. I can sit out front and drop wild turkeys that get close. <laughs> well, I, I'd admire to let you borrow it, Evan. <laughs> Thank you, Baldy. There. You see? You each bought the thing you liked the best of all and gave those things to each other. Oh, oh you're too misunderstanding suspicious old fire eaters, you. Oh, it's the Indian. Me come see about fur coat. Shut that door. The coal's coming in. Huh? You sell fur coat? No, Dad Raddit, no. I ain't a selling this fur. Not for nothing. And if you see that masked man, tell him the rifle ain't for sale neither. Uh, 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 me, me tell him. Uh. Nah, that settles that. Oh, if you only knew, Uncle Evan, Uncle Baldy. I still can't figure out what that masked man and the redskin wanted the coat and rifle for. Or why in Junket they were so doggone funny about having Caroline come to meet them in the same place on Frozen River. Don't try to figure it out. <laughs> You're laughing. Oh, you two old darlings. You don't even understand your own mind. So don't try to understand the Lone Rangers. Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.